Hi scholars, it's Miss Adams from Great Hearts Athenaeum and I just wanted to let you know that we miss you. We hope you are healthy, happy, spending some quality time at home with your families and we can't wait to be able to see you again soon. Now, since we can't have Athenaeum in person for a while, I wanted to share with you a few activities that you can do while you're at home. But first, I know you've been working hard on your schoolwork at home and you probably need a brain break. It's good to take a brain break anytime you're working hard or you're concentrating or you just feel like you need to move your body. So this one is a song about the days of the week and it has a movement for each day. First, I'll show you the movements for each day and then we'll do the song together. We'll do it once slow and then we'll see how fast we can go. So first is Monday and that's get up and run day. So you can get up and run right in place, just like this. Tuesday is touch your shoes day. So reach down and touch your toes. Or if you want to be fancy, you can lift your toes up and touch them like this. Wednesday is twist and bend day. So twist and bend your body, stretch. Thursday is twirl and turn day. So put your arms out and twirl in a circle. Don't get dizzy. Friday is jump up high day, so jump as high as you can. Saturday is pat your body day, so pat your body and make a good drum beat. Sunday, that's the one day that we stop and take a rest. So fold your hands like a pillow and pretend to take a nap. If you're in a place where you can lie down on the floor and pretend to take a nap, you can do it that way too. All right, let's give it a go. Slow, and then we'll do it fast. First, it's Monday, Monday, get up and run day. Tuesday, Tuesday, touch your shoes day. Wednesday, Wednesday, twist and bend day. Thursday, Thursday, twirl and turn day. Friday, Friday, jump up high day. Saturday, Saturday, patch your body day. Sunday, Sunday, that's the one day when we stop and take a rest. Until it's Monday, Monday, get up and run day. Tuesday, Tuesday, touch your shoes day. Wednesday, Wednesday, twist and bend day. Thursday, Thursday, twirl and turn day. Friday, Friday, jump up high day. Saturday, Saturday, patch your body day. Sunday, Sunday, that's the one day when we stop and take a rest. Whew, that was fun. My heart is pumping and I feel good. There's one more thing I want to share with you, and this is a product that you can do at home. So let's go to my desk. Have you ever felt worried about something? I know I have. Sometimes if something unexpected happens or our lives change, we can feel worried or concerned or anxious. Can you think about a time that you felt that way? What did you do? Who did you talk to? What made you feel better? In the Central American country, Guatemala, there is a Mayan legend that tells about the use of worry dolls. Let's look at where Guatemala is on a map. So this is a map of Central America. Can you see that? And Guatemala is right there between Mexico and Honduras. And the Guatemalans have passed this tradition along from generation to generation and it tells a story of colorful worry dolls. Little dolls that children can tell their worries to before they go to bed at night and it helps them to feel comfortable and have a good night's sleep without any worries. Now the legend says that the dolls are magic. And when the children wake up, the dolls will have helped them have a good night's rest and will gift them with the wisdom that they need to make their worries go away. So I'm gonna tell you a traditional Guatemalan worry doll story. And then we can maybe make some worry dolls of our own. In the hills of Guatemala, there lived an old man his daughter, Flora, and his children, 
Maria, and Diego. Their home was small. It was a hut made of wood and mud. And the grandfather was a farmer, just like his father before him and his father's ancestors. And he taught his own family to be farmers as well. One year, there was a terrible drought. That means there was no rain. And without enough rain, the crops withered and died. And they had very little food. The whole family would wake up every day with the sun and go out and tend to the fields in hopes that the rain would return. At night, Flora would weave colorful fabric, colorful yarn into fabric that she could take to the market and sell to get the money that they needed for food and other supplies. The grandfather would tell the children stories before tucking them into bed at night. One of the children's favorite stories was about a magical doll that could grant wishes. One night, a burglar snuck into the hut and stole all of Flora's cloth, everything that she had worked so hard to make over many months. She cried because she had nothing to sell at the market and didn't know how the family would get the money that they needed. The next day, Flora came down with a fever and Maria knew that she had to do something to help the family. She had an idea. She went through her mother's weaving basket and found little bits and pieces and scraps of fabric, all odd shapes and colors. She brought the basket outside and she told her brother, Diego, to collect little twigs, little sticks, for her. With the scraps of fabric and the little twigs, Diego and Flora went to work. They worked late into the night and they worked until they ran out of cloth. And when they had, they saw that they had made dozens of tiny little dolls with tiny little clothes. Maria hoped that these dolls would be magical, just like the ones in her grandfather's story. That night, Maria lined up a few of the dolls and spoke to them and told them her worries. My little friends, she said, we need your help. My family is in trouble. The fields are dry. My mother is sick and we have no food or money. Please help us. Good night. She placed the dolls lovingly under her pillow and she lay down to go to sleep. Maria slept very well that night, confident that the dolls would somehow help her. In the morning, Maria and Diego packed up the dolls and walked along the path to the market. The family was so poor they didn't even have shoes. They had to walk barefoot. When they got there, they found the market was crowded with people. They had never sold at the market before and Maria had never seen anyone else sell little dolls there, but she was determined that her plan would work. The two finally found a good spot right next to a shoe seller. Maria and Diego laid the dolls out on the sidewalk. The shoe seller saw them and wondered who would want to buy such tiny little dolls. Maria explained there was magic in these dolls. The shoe seller laughed. He said, <laughs> I have never seen any magic help sell my shoes. But Maria said, we shall see. The day wore on, but nobody bought any dolls. The children were becoming sad and worried. As Maria started packing up the dolls to go home, a man in very fine fancy clothes and a large hat came by and asked what they were selling. Diego said, these little dolls. Maria added, magic dolls. The man looked impressed. Well, I could use a little magic. I will take all of them. Maria and Diego excitedly wrapped up all the dolls for the man and he handed them a big stack of money without even asking how much they were. Maria thanked him and the man was gone before Maria could say anything else. She counted the money and found that there was enough there 
to help her family live for an entire year. The two bought some food at the market. They bought shoes for their feet and they headed home to tell their mother and grandfather the news. We sold all the dolls we made, Diego exclaimed. Magic dolls, Maria emphasized, and she told them the whole story. And as she spoke, the clouds opened up and it began to rain. That night, as Maria got ready for bed, she noticed something in her pocket. She reached in to find a pouch that contained the same doll she had slept under with under her pillow that night. She was surprised because she thought she had sold all of the dolls to the man at the market. Inside the pouch was a little note that read, tell these dolls your secret wishes, tell them your problems, tell them your dreams, and when you wake, you may find the magic within you to make your dreams come true. So what do you think? Do you think the dolls were really magical? Why do you think it helped to tell her worries to the dolls? You can let me know your answers by typing in the comments below, and I would love to hear what you are thinking about. I'm also going to post this picture of some worry dolls. So let's see if I can show you the picture. Here is a picture of some Guatemalan worry dolls. Let's see if you can see it. It looks, they look like this. Can you see? They're very colorful. And I actually have some Guatemalan worry dolls from Guatemala. I'll show you how tiny they are. Here's another one. And I like to think this is the mama worry doll. They're so small. These are made out of wire and fabric, but you can make worry dolls out of things that you have just around the house. You might be able to find a clothespin and some fabric. These are some that are made out of clothespins down here, if you can see. You might be able to use yarn or string, just a little piece. And if you don't have those things, you can make worry dolls out of things that you might just have lying around. Like these are twist ties. So I made a worry doll just by using twist ties and a little piece of string. And if you don't have two twist ties, you can find these, they hold the bag of bread together, you twist it around the bag, or sometimes um, garbage bags have twist ties. If you don't have two, you can even use one and just cut it in half like that. And what I did was I folded the twist tie and then I used another one to twist around it to make the arms just like that. And then you have your own little worry doll. And you can use the fabric or the yarn to wrap it around and make some clothes. Now, if you don't have a twist tie, you can even make your worry doll out of paper. And I made this one out of a little pieces of an old grocery list that I was all done with. So any little scraps of paper, you can fold it and you can draw your face on or color it if you have some magic markers, or you can just use colorful paper and you don't have to draw at all for the clothes. 
So you can try making a worry doll at home. You can make it out of whatever you have and then take a picture of it and post the pictures down in the comments too. We would love to see how creative you are making your own worry dolls. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching our Athenaeum video. I hope you have a great week and we will see you next time.